welcome to my concluding video from this trip to Albania here in February 2023. I congratulate first of all because it's the 17th of February. I congratulate Kosovo for 15 years of independence. That's always something really very special to celebrate because it was the right uh, thing to do to intervene by NATO into uh, the um, disaster which Milosevic did, the genocide. We should have done that already uh, for Ukraine as well. It's a big mistake if we don't intervene. We should have done and it was the right thing in Bosnia. Of course, we should have done much more in Bosnia. And so today still we have a mess because we allowed the Republika Srpska to develop and have a veto on foreign policy. I call again for Bosnia to be in NATO, for Kosovo to be in NATO and for the recognition of Kosovo by these shameful countries like Spain, Slovakia and Romania, Greece and Cyprus and Bosnia and Ukraine and Moldova and Georgia who have not recognized till today. Even Ukraine, I'm really very angry with Ukraine. Yeah? Of course you are great heroes, but the non-recognition of Kosovo is a dark shadow over the Ukraine foreign policy and it must change. It must change. Recognize Kosovo today. All countries who are living from our subsidies, from European support, military, industrial, fiscally, you know that you then impose your own foreign policy and you make problems for us <laughs> on other fronts. Yeah? This is entirely unacceptable. I call for more unity between uh, Kosovo, Ukraine and all the issues. I understand some people in Munich today, they will discuss and say, yes, you know, we have so many issues, what we can do. I will explain you all here in this podcast. It's not so complicated, yeah? We simply have to come back to Ronald Reagan and to George W. Bush, yeah? First of all, we have to defeat the Soviet Union and its new incarnation of the evil empire, the Russian Federation of uh, Vladimir Putin. Of course, not in a military confrontation, but fiscally, industrially, and to outperform them and also to supply Ukraine enough weapons that they can at least uh, regain all the territory of February 22. <laughs> Because that's the minimum. We must liberate Mariupol and we must liberate it in 2023 because we don't need a long war. We want to win it. <laughs> That's the idea. And of course, for Crimea and for the Donbass, uh, which is already an eight year long conflict, nine year now, we have to work on a political settlement after we have Ukraine in NATO. And yes, we need Ukraine in NATO. And for this, Kosovo must be recognized by Ukraine. And we need the European Union to join NATO and because that's also essential to make good of what we have lost in 2016. This was the Russian funded Brexit campaign. Of course, we must have the return and it of course, it must be Boris Johnson, the Secretary General of NATO, who integrates the EU in NATO and also Ukraine. And he will be ultimately making good what he done wrong in 2016 and 2029. The UK will return to the European Union and we will be much more united and it will be a much better Europe and the UK will also have the Euro and that is the better future ahead of us and the end of the Russian Empire of Putin the defeat will come as a result of NATO membership of Ukraine and Kosovo Bosnia because we will stop this unholy appeasement of Ishingas and Jack Sullivan's and whatever is a smart strategist in the US or in Munich because this is all BS, big BS. <laughs> What we need is very simple. Win this war and uh, also enlarge the UN, NATO and the Euro and the OECD and Schengen. And there are our enemies inside the Orbans and now Nehama is unfortunately doesn't the enemy. He is just incapable to understand uh, global po European politics and he is in desperate need for more votes and Orban is uh, thinking that he can deliver this and in reality he is a complete disaster. So here my mission in Albania these uh, last four days, it was very interesting. I learned a lot of things. I never believed Berisha when he said that the internationals are corrupt, but there are some. <laughs> and that Rama is able via his uh, old Sigurimi, that's the state secret service network, which uh, had uh, outposts everywhere and they have still this network in New York and then they can uh, funnel money into the FBI senior level uh, to get results uh, for Deripaska or to 
threaten sanctions against the Albanian business people and uh, to buy influence in America with such money in the justice sector. <laughs> I was always sure there is money floating into the political sector, but the high-level FBI officials to go rogue and work for Russian Serbian interests. By the way, Serbian interests. See this uh, this uh, special uh, envoy of uh, the U.S. Grenell. He now got a big uh, medal. <laughs> you know, I print my medals here myself. Yeah? <laughs> Grenell gets it from the Serbian state. Yeah, the same like Sebastian Kurz. Yeah? You see, treason is happening all over the place. Yeah? We have it in um, Austria with this complicity with Russia. And again, the McGonagall scandal has a big Austrian connect because he was indirectly working for Russian interest via Austria. Because Terry Pasca has built a big uh, energy network uh, and uh, construction company network in Austria, which is ultimately Russian. Hi, Sigi Wolf, <laughs> and many in Strabag, Raffes, and this is really very, very complicated and we have to have an investigative committee for the results of that big scandal. And I'm very pro-American, don't get me wrong, but I'm very against American appeasement, I'm very much against uh, crime in America, and all good Americans and all good Europeans should be against socialist corruption 10 years here imposed on Albania. <laughs> And I know very well what I'm talking about. It was basically imposed on Albania because they didn't like Berisha anymore. They wanted the uh, Rama. They managed to have this coalition in 2013, supported in 2017 and in 2021 a third time. And then we have now 10 years and we have then allowed all these massive marijuana based money laundering schemes, making so much benefits that then ultimately they have easy money to also use uh, beautifully to bribe FBI officials and many others. <laughs> and these rogue agents then go totally rogue uh, once they have crossed the lines. Uh. And luckily his ex-girlfriend has exposed this scandal because that's why it broke. Uh. And I never believed it because I'm principally a naive person who doesn't believe in evil and I don't believe that international well-paid uh, judiciary officers of the United States of America <laughs> would actually then go rogue and then accept money from a um, socialist narco system here in Albania and then uh, they are coming here actually against legitimate American business and compete uh, unfairly against them. That's exactly what happened in the oil industry then. <laughs> it's outrageous, you have to take that. <laughs> yeah, anyhow, this is something, <coughs> sorry. And needs a major investigation and needs to be really uh, clarified and needs to be investigated in the European Parliament. I think in US Congress it's now happening and I'm absolutely working to make this uh, as big as it is. And you know, there might be American interest at stake not to expose it and not to discuss it too much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but you know, the Americans are also not supporting me for NATO membership because they always like the status quo. <laughs> Yes, and they like a socialist prime minister here. <laughs> and they don't really push Romania or Greece to recognize Kosovo because why? <laughs> you know, this status quo elite of America, uh, I'm also finished until here. <laughs> yes, and they don't want a US FDA. Uh, okay, it's too complicated. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you want always the same? <laughs> this is exactly the policy. It's under Biden. Yeah, let's not forget, also with all friendship. Yeah. It's under Biden where this terrible war in Ukraine neglected uh, because it is not uh, that Putin took him very seriously, seemingly. Uh, he is now very serious and they have responded to the challenge. But by far not as good as it could be. Uh, because now after one year we're starting to send tanks. Yeah? <laughs> they call big, you know, land lease program. But in reality, you know, of course it was much better than Europe run by the Pisa's Macron <laughs> who wants to go to the theater instead of meeting uh, uh, Zelensky. Uh, this is outrageous scandal as well. And uh, they have all been, you know, we are all exposed because Putin in a way was insofar correct that we are not really well organized and we are quite uh, divided and we are not really capable of living up to a military challenge. Yeah? It was the Ukrainians who have ultimately responded and the American establishment finally woke up and it was uh, Boris Johnson and the Polish and you know there were good sides as well. But in principle, our performance in the first war year is quite miserable. Sweden and Finland have at least done something. Joining NATO, Austria a lot uh, was not achieved. <laughs> we have not left the energy sector 
from Russia. We have actually again 7 billion. We have not joined NATO. We have not really done this famous term of Zeitenwende. <laughs> and also the Germans, um, by far not as good as we could be. So overall, this was very interesting here. I congratulate again Kosovo for 15 years. I say as well for Albania to be uh, really changing to adopt the Euro. That would be my strategy to have the Euro as Balkan Benelux in all the countries here. And of course also the offer for Serbia to join the West yeah, by adopting the Euro and by recognizing Kosovo would be much more successful if Albania would do it as well. <laughs> and then it's more credible. But it's not happening. And then of course the whole debate about Open Balkan. I always I have to explain it maybe. I always compare uh, um, Edi Rama with Esad Pasha. He was the Albanian leader after the First World War who collaborated with Mr. Pasic from Serbia. You know, it was terrible. And that's of course not, not good. Yeah? What we need is now to leave open Balkans, to end the collaborationist uh, attitude of the socialists here with uh, Mr. Vucic in Serbia, and then uh, to really turn west, adopt the Euro, join the EU Customs Union, hold the European Parliament elections for observer MEPs next year here in Albania, Montenegro and in Macedonia and best in Kosovo and Bosnia as well and in Ukraine obviously Moldova, Georgia and then to go ahead and to really integrate all countries and to do it like we did it in the 2000s yeah? fast track and uh, enlargement of NATO and of EU and the Euro in the good times from uh, 2000 to 2007 yeah? then we basically uh, had uh, this big uh, Bucharest summit uh, and the appeasement of Ischinger and all and this um, George Bush, anti-Bushism and then we had the problem in Macedonia and Georgia and Ukraine, the big wars which were coming because we didn't really contain and confront Russia. Uh, they were not coming because we provoked Russia. He wanted to do a military confrontation and he did it. Yeah? and we should have confronted him back then and back there. And so many people in Syria and Ukraine would still live if we had contained and stopped actually Putin to have this terrible fourth mandate when he came back with a vengeance and has really imposed on the world his evil schemes. Yeah? And that was what Mrs. Clinton actually, he has understood that. And uh, then they had not done enough to topple him in 2012. That's the history, of course. Now we are here in 2023. What we need to do is, of course, to make sure that all the countries who have not recognized Kosovo to recognize Kosovo again. The whole litany of countries which must bear their subsidy must be frozen and they must be reprimanded by the US and the EU for keeping 15 years on the sideline and insisting on some kind of funny association of Serb municipalities, a concept which led to so much problems in Bosnia and which we don't need again in Kosovo. So on the contrary, let's really isolate Serbia and let's really make sure that we support Kosovo completely and that we work together effectively here in the four smaller countries of the southern Balkans to unite and uh, inside the, the Euro and the Customs Union and NATO and making sure that all these countries join the European Union as soon as possible and a lot of this is already possible exactly next year in the European Parliament election 2024. Besides, I criticize also this country, Albania, that they have done so little for Ukraine. It's not only the Kosovo foreign policy and the appeasement of Serbia, but it's also so little for Ukraine here. This is really very bad. Yeah? I cannot understand that a country like um, Albania with all this enormous weapons industry is not able to do much more in terms of ammunition and delivery. And it would be possible to have each and every unemployed person in Albania to work in the ammunition factories and send the stuff uh, to Ukraine, which is so needed. It's especially the Soviet... Uh, so, uh, supplied factories which are still here in Albania. They could deliver exactly the ammunition for the artillery and the um, Kalashnikov which are so urgently needed at the front, at the eastern front, at the front with the evil empire. I talked a lot about the breakup of Russia to come. We should at least have been ready 
uh, in terms of solving all the problems of southeastern Europe because we all will be very busy with the breakup of Russia and we have not even managed the breakup of Yugoslavia because the French have never come to terms that this is reality. They will also oppose uh, the breakup of Russia, but it's a much better policy not to have an evil empire on the east of us anymore. And we should all focus on that one. So I wish, of course, Kosovo 15 years is a wonderful success uh, role model of uh, the European intervention and humanitarian intervention, but also uh, of the theory of the practical result of uh, new states is better than evil empires. And I'm very much in favor of that. That's what I call the Fellinger Doctrine. I was not invited to the Munich Security Conference, but be sure I will post a video about 15 years. And I'm very disappointed that we have in the whole year, even under Trump, we got the Israel to recognize Kosovo. And Biden didn't get a single country now to recognize. Yeah? Kosovo, that's really very disappointing. In one year of war where everything is changing, Zeitenwende, nothing for Kosovo up to now and very disappointing you see our political elites um, in many ways are inviting war and aggression because they are confused <laughs> and partly corrupt as we know now maybe it was just the individual but let's see who else was involved in that one good or bad let's clean up the mess and let's be more united as an answer to the russian war and most of all let's win that war and let's support ukraine to re-liberate Mariupol and I will be going to Mariupol once it's free and I will celebrate and now let me conclude with a uh, Slava Ukraine and liberate Mariupol and let's supply Ukraine and let's uh, make sure that we have a big enlargement round at the Vilnius summit with Kosovo and with Austria and with uh, Bosnia and with Ukraine, free Ukraine in the Euro, in NATO and in the EU joining NATO. This is the logic and that's what I'm fighting for. Thanks a lot. And please, by the way, visit Tirana. It's an amazing country. It's, uh, Albania is fantastic. And please uh, come here, see yourself. And I recommend Albania for the European Union in 2024. Thanks a lot and all the best here from Tirana. Bye.